Hello, swordsmen, and welcome back to another episode of Fury of the Outlands. We're back, baby! Oh, oh, oh. Yeah. Holy fuck. Uh, first off, uh, I'm your humble dungeon master, Dan. I am a theater freak and a TTRPG geek. Notice I didn't say D&D because, well, it's been over a month. I apologize. Um, we... I know we have been gone for a long ass time, and that is mostly my fault. Um, but we're back now. Thank freaking gods. Uh, before we get into the episode, I'm going to do a couple of uh, plugins, at the very least one, like we usually do. Uh, if you want to see what our life is like outside of D&D, go over onto Spotify to the podcast Guys Guys. Uh, where some of us just hop in there, talk a bunch of random shit. Uh, this last time we were talking about video games and several different uh, tabletop RPGs and their mechanics. Uh, it was also decently critical role related because they're all voice actors and they are also the now a tabletop RPG company since November of last year. Uh, but at this point, that doesn't matter. If you want to listen to that, uh, I'd say go right ahead. Um, kids, you can listen to it too. Fuck the Stone Club. <laughs> you bastard. <laughs> oh, God. Why are you muted? <laughs> I was saying, I was saying, except for the second episode, the second episode is not for children. Yes. Se okay. So I. Yeah. Second episode. Everything else is yeah, fine. No. Mo episode mostly that everything. I am in, no kids. Yeah. No. Uh, most of the episodes, <laughs> I would say, is family friendly. Second episode, definitely not. Uh, this latest episode is family friendly. I mean, yeah. No. It's 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 nice. So yeah, go ahead and check that out. Um, if you want to see a bunch of artwork, uh, our buddy Angel has a bunch of shit. Uh, on Instagram, YouTube, go to Tenshi Art. Uh, we'll probably have that linked in our YouTube thing. Uh, if you want to know what the fuck I've been doing that takes a whole damn month out of my time, uh, there is a... YouTube page called uh, Redwood Playhouse, which is actually the name of a building that we use for theater stuff, because like I said, I'm a theater freak and that's what I was doing. So go over there. It has a bunch of clips of different theater skits from the local community and eventually the skits that I was a part of. Because good fucking lord. This year, we did a collection of eight different skits written by the community. I was in three of them. <laughs> of course you one were. Of them, I and in one of them, I technically had three different roles and oh. quick changes. Oh, quick changes. What was that one? It was one? exhausting. That was the first one. It's true. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that's true so yeah no those will eventually get posted up I have no control of it unfortunately that is someone else's job but I am plugging that in because every, yeah. I, because that's my excuse for being out for a month um and to uh and kind of getting back to the group here in sort of a apology for being gone for so long and not having anything else for you all to do. I'll let you all level up for this session. So you're level four now, instead of me having to do it after this session, which was the original plan. But then I was like, nah, I've tortured these guys long enough. So, uh, I know in our Guys Guys podcast, we did say we we're planning on doing a Candela Obscura one shot at the end of the month, but it looks like we may have to postpone that because everyone else has got a bunch of scheduling shit and we don't have time to do a huge ass session zero to go over shit for a one shot using a different system. We will eventually, though. I don't know when. So be prepared for that in the future because goddamn that system is fun 
Um, but that being said, like I told uh, Carlo and Angel, if you guys want to look up the rules for yourself, I have a link in our Discord in the character sheets chat that has the PDF of the core rule book. You guys can read that. There are also PDF downloads for character sheets if you want to look at that as well. Uh, for those listening, yeah, no, you ain't getting it. Sorry. <laughs> Yeah, so I, I would, I would if I could, but if we posted a link to a free PDF of something we're not associated with, I'm going. We're going to have Darrington Press and Critical Role breathing down our necks. So we're just going to. For, so for the sake of, for, for the sake for the sake of legality, uh, I'm just putting this out for the D and D group here. Isn't even that public. a risk? <laughs> no. Fine. No. Because because these okay. guys know better. Yeah. Yeah, okay. I paid for it. <laughs> they didn't. <laughs> okay. Now, with that said, let's get into a very long recap. God, sir. So. To summarize the entire arc of what has happened within the last seven episodes, our players, our various different scavengers and survivors and residents within the nation of the Outlands of the continent of Ekra, all were requested at a tavern within the outpost known as Baron's Rest, and were recruited for a job by a mage by the name of Matthias Dane, otherwise known as Icarus's Mage Twink. Oh. <laughs> Matthias originally tasked the party members to be bodyguards in a excavation mission within the southeastern region of the Outlands, to which Arachion Zandiri, Angel's character, acknowledged the fact that the area in question was a part of an outer territory belonging to a raider clan known as the Night Heralds. In their uh immediate travels they spent the night in the open skies and first came across a literal person falling out of the sky almost on fire which lo, That's me. which lo and behold became the ever so ever so around Traveler, Crystalina Star. <laughs> and also after time, the party was uh, attacked by a bunch of bandits who were not affiliated with any raider clan, but somehow were thinking it was a good idea to get the jump on the party because they were after a Raytheon as there was a wanted poster within one of their persons. This came to the discovery that Arachion used to be a part of a raider clan known as the Lions of the Sands. And at this point, he was exiled from the clan, whether by his own choice or by the choice of the Bandlord. He has not shared with us. If he has, I totally forgot, so we're just going to say he hasn't. <laughs> And after some discussions, the party continued to be on their way to the excavation site where Matthias had wanted them to take him to. In the, these travels, Matthias also revealed that he was originally supposed to be meeting his master, the Archmage Raffenfell, at Baron's Rest, but he never made it to the rendezvous. And Matthias originally assumed that it was because Rathenfell got caught up in his studies. 
this turned out not to be the case, as Rathenfell was just completely missing. After some tracking, it was discovered that Rathenfell was actually taken by a small raider group, uh, which then led to be discovered that the raider group, group was a part of none other than the Night Heralds. After a couple of scuffles between several of the groups within of various caverns near the excavation site, it was discovered that this particular group was sent here to kind of stay in control of the territory un unless they wanted it to be taken by another raider clan known as the Reavers. The l leader of this group, a person by the name of Liza, supposedly had a sort of closer ear to the Night Herald's band lord than most, and eventually the party actually got to meet Liza. After several other moments of being shocked of, oh shit, there are more bandits, to eventually Icarus um, lose character, walking up to them and, re and revealing to at the very least to the uh, raiders and maybe not a hundred percent towards the party that he had relations to a couple of the deities within the pantheon to be more specifically um he had ties to three of them in particular uh Brynith, the goddess of darkness and the lady of the lost Zarias, no, not Zarias, Zathras. God, I always get that mixed up. Zathras, the god of the dead, and Asmodeus, the lord of the hells. Whether or not this was completely revealed to this party, I don't remember 100%, and we'll just kind of leave it at that. <laughs> it's been over a month, okay? Um... After meeting with Liza, it was discovered that she had uh, shape-shifting abilities as she originally was disguised as Rathenfell to possibly lure other mages or other members of Matthias's organization to the caves. This eventually led to a conversation allowing Liza to grant the party passage through the Night Herald's territory to their, for lack of a better words, headquarters, an area within the Outlands known as the Crescent Hollow. Uh, after some traveling and the everyone made it to the Hollow, the party all end up meeting with the Bandlord of the Night Heralds, a uh, fallen Azamar by the name of Alessia Shade. Alessia discussed that she was unable to give the give Rathenfell to the party willingly, as he was a part of a contract to a person who was described as a man with no soul, as he was seen with heavy spell tech augmentation the likes of which has not really been seen throughout the outlands after a private conversation with icarus it was discovered that if the party challenged a member of the night heralds to a duel for like i don't remember the actual words i said but we'll just say that uh if the Party, he issued a challenge to one of the Night Heralds in this particular case. They challenged Liza and offered to throw in a wager to which both members agreed to. That wager could then be the favor of releasing Rathenfell and several other mages that were captured by the Night Heralds. Liza agreed, and the party chose Arikion to be their champion within this duel the Liza and Arachion agreed that 
the rules for this duel would be first to fall instead of and would not have to result in anyone fall, uh, fall, uh, dying. But they did agree to keep the standard tradition of the Outlands to where the winner could be could take a certain token from their opponent if they won. The players then commenced a secondary plan while this was happening to make sure that no matter what the outcome was, that the mages would be released and return and removed from the Crescent Hollow and the Night Herald's uh, grasp. God, I am terrible with words right now. I am sorry. You're good. You got it. The... Well, long story short, the duel commenced. Arachion won, but also revealed his true identity to the Night Heralds, in which Alessia said that while they were... While Liza did say that his identity would not be revealed to the lions. Alessia said that it wasn't necessarily... That was a statement that Liza really had no power in saying, and Alessia would still have to mention this that to the lions that Arachion was within their compound. However, Alessia did agree that after the duel and after they the party left, she would give them about a half an hour before calling it in. Arachion was enraged, and during this time, and when he won, he claimed his token to be Liza's eye. My fucking god. <laughs> but to keep with word in the rest of the wager within the uh, challenge... The mages were released, and the party was allowed to leave the hollow untouched. And after this, Liza abruptly left and disappeared. To where? None of you are sure. At this point, you got what you came for. You have Rathenfell, you have Matthias, and a few other of the mages of the Nation of Tyrus. And at this point, that is where we are now. One thing I wanted to add really quickly is this, yeah. is, this may be important to like Liza later on. Well, at least whatever involves Liza. I also told her when I did take her eye that if you want it, you grab it off my dead body. That Pretty is true. Pretty much issuing a sort of, if you want me, or if you want the eye, you gotta kill me to get it. So, at this point, most of you are at the mouth of the hollow to where it leads to the cave where the car is parked. Uh, Arachion, you are just leaving the hollow square in which the challenge was issued. Um, Icarus, I don't remember 100% where you are exactly. I know you talked with Alessia at one end of the alleyways, but I don't know if you went back to the square to join up with Arachion or if you went to the mouth of the cave where everyone else is at this point. He fell asleep again, didn't he? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, you know what? Either way, we'll say that uh, eventually you guys do make it back uh, to the mouth of the cave. You guys traverse your way through the caves back to where the car is. Um, actually, before we go any further to where you guys are actually heading out of the hollow, is there anything else here that you guys wanted to do? I mean, I think Arachion at this point is good, but um, 
Yuri, at this point, what about you? Yuri, um... <laughs> is just kind of like... Hesitatingly looking at Arikion, um, after knowing that, like, he fucking took... It was Liza's eye, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. He's just, like... He just sees Arikion in such a different light now. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it. Alright, uh, Bigby, what about you? Just following Arikion. Uh, you know, <laughs> the eye thing? Kind of cool. <laughs> you would like it, Bigby? My god. <laughs> a little impressive. You have to admit. Impressive. Mm. Impressive, but we're leaving a trail of blood behind us. It's a little concerning. In character? Yes. Oh, well then he didn't, I didn't say that in character. Oh. I was saying that he was. Yeah, no. My bad, my bad. No, you good. All right. Um, I'm guessing Lou is still asleep. <laughs> <laughs> I will add that uh, Arikion did, he doesn't have any ice spells so he was gonna put it on ice like freeze it but he's just gonna put it away in a case until he can get back to the rest yeah, where he that's can... oh so it's just rotting oh this foul <laughs> yeah but I- i'm gonna try but he's gonna try his best to like seal it as much as possible no air or anything like that so yeah yeah no that's fine oh, i see movement over on lou's side he's rousing from his sleep <laughs> Shut up. Did you fall asleep? No, you're fine, boy. You're fine. Yeah, you're good. We literally just started. For the pretty much. So, yeah. At this point, you guys have all made your way out of the main part of the hollow and are back at the uh, back at the cruiser. Um, you see, at this point, uh. You are still being followed by night heralds, but they are keeping their distance, and you do not see Alessia or Liza with them. For the most part, it's just standard. There's, it's just some of the standard raiders. Yeah. Um. So yeah, you all end up packing your things. Um, you see that the mages all obviously cannot fit in your cruiser, but you see that some of them do uh, cast spells and actually summon their own steeds to travel along with you. And you all make your way out of this cave and out of the hollow. Um, the, the journey itself is going to take at the very least three to four days to get back to the rest as it was quite a long ass journey. And it took you a couple of days even to just get to the excavation point where they, you originally were. So is there anything at this point during the drive from the hollow to the rest, which I'm guessing that's where you all are going instead of to the excavation point. Oh, wait. Uh, hmm. Yeah, honestly, because the grunts are chasing us, do you guys think that we should continue to go on to the rest, or did you guys just want to stop at the excavation? The grunts, the Night Herald grunts didn't, aren't following you out of their territory. They were just following you out of the hollow to your car. Oh, they were like 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 uh, chaperoning us, kind of, I guess. Yeah, making sure you guys actually oh. fucking left. I thought they were like, Oh, Pitchforks, you took yeah. my ladies. We saw. No, 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 no. But they are pissed. <laughs> Understandably so. Yeah, Understandably I'm... so. This this do, this does. Um, I will say because of this action, this does affect your uh oh god how this does uh, have yeah no this does affect your reputation level uh with the night heralds 
fucking didn't even cover the deductible anyway. So oh, and they're in the line. All my homies so, you know, hate the Night Heralds. So, is there anything that you wanted to do or say between each other during this journey uh, from the Hollow to the rest? Oh, well, I mean, now that we know that they weren't chasing us with pitchforks and torches. Yeah, no, they're not chasing you. Did y'all want to stop at the? Did y'all want to pause at the excavation site so that he can get his shit together? Or did y'all want to head yeah, back? Yeah, sure. I'm down to stop you. You guys, you two? Sure. Well, no, 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 I know you two do, but like, I'm, uh, Lupin, Roz. Sounds fine to me. I see, yeah, but it, keep going, I don't mind. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so we're doing the excavation site, we're gonna drop them off, mm, so get our money. Yeah, it takes you about it takes you about a day and a half to two days to get there. Um, it's a long ass drive. You get to the excavation point, and you do see that, for the most part, a lot of the stuff that was left there before, like Matthias packed everything when you guys headed to the Hollow originally, a good chunk of the stuff that was left there is gone at this point as you can assume that several of the other her heralds throughout the area probably just end up taking it or for all you you don't know but you know it's gone um you the mages gather up what little of the stuff there is which they're not completely um they're not completely void of all the stuff they had. Matthias did end up uh, originally grabbing a good chunk of the stuff, and uh, they are still able to salvage some of the stuff that is left here, so it's not like they're leaving empty-handed. Um, during this time, you do see that Rathenfell, this sort of half-elven a uh, man with a beard comes over to you guys and he says well I will say I can't thank you all enough for your help in all this and I can't really imagine what would have happened if we all ended up stuck there And, uh, well, as he's finishing up saying that, he's gonna say, he, well, first he's gonna get out of the car. He's gonna say, Doesn't matter. Where's my payments? Ah, yes. Um, my student did say that, um, my student did say that he would be able to pay with gold, or if there was some other uh, something else that you would require that is within our availability we'd be more than happy to uh, provide you with that as well I just need the gold all right uh and, and make it worth the while considering what we had to go through to get you uh, yes of course um and what about you uh master genasi oh um i would ask a moment of your time but i can wait until the payment has been handled of course, of course. Um, I wonder, what about you, young kobold? I don't think I require anything. Standard gold payment as well. Um, and you, young lady, um, 
Did you I'm, want to? I'm okay. I don't. I don't need anything extra or anything. I'm just glad you guys are okay. As are we. Um, and then you see Rathenfeld turns to you, Icarus, and goes, And you, sir, is there anything else that you... Lose the sleep again. <laughs> <laughs> He's like the Xbox that's person nice. turns on and that, off at that's, random times. That's fine. Gone. We can backtrack if we need to. Yeah. So, as of right now, we have where Arachion and Big B are asking for a gold payment. Yuri is just asking for a moment of time. And Kristalina is just being so generous and is like, no, I'm I'm just here. Pretty much. Yeah. So, at, so yeah, at that point, um, and some discussion with... Uh, some of the other mages. Um, Raycon, you can kind of tell that they did, like, when they were coming here and scavenging uh, to do their excavation, they didn't exactly think of having gold in mind, and uh, Matthias did have the money for originally hiring you guys, but everyone agrees that at this point, asking, uh, having you be paid for a little extra more than what was initially uh, than what Matthias initially had uh, is probably best and you don't really see them having that many finances at this point so after conversations Rathenfell comes back to you and it's like unfortunately we don't have the entire payment for you and the rest of your party we would have to wait until we get back to either Baron's Rest or back to the checkpoints um, to give you your payment in full. But at the very least, please uh, accept this uh, as uh, th th as a down payment of sorts. And to you, Arachion, and Big B, he gives um, he gives 150 gold. Uh, Arachion is going to put up his hands. He's going to say... We'll just wait until we get back to work to the rest. I want to see everything counted up, paid in full, paid in full. Very well. Uh, Rathenfell pockets the money, turns to you, Yuri, and he's like, I suppose we will also wait until we get to the rest to have our conversation then, sir. Of course. Like well... Uh, with that, they gathered the last of their stuff, and you make your way back to the rest. Um, much as I want to, we are not going to deal with that at the moment, but I will say, towards the end of your journey, there is, uh, during the last night, you're on the road. Um, there are going to be a couple of things that happen here. So, first things first. Uh, which one of you guys is taking the first shift of the night? I could. If y'all want to, I can. Okay, go for it. All right. So, yeah. Uh, Arachion, give me a perception check. Good thing I'm good at those. <laughs> Roll good. <laughs> uh, oh my! Oh shit! Well, I mean, you have a plus three, so that actually isn't half bad. All right. Um, but yeah, damn, dirty twenty. Uh, okay. So then, who is going to be taking second shift? I'll do it. I'll take second shift. I'll go. You go. I'll take third. <laughs> Okay, I can take a second. Alright. Alright, uh, roll perceptions. Alrighty. Fifteen. Okay. Okay, uh, and then who is gonna be taking third? Dibs! <laughs> Alright, Carlo, uh, roll perception as well. 
Hey. Oh my damn. I, you guys got good rolls today. Um don't look at the net one above me. Don't just don't look at that. <laughs> yeah. Um so yeah, no, throughout your entirety of your shifts, you don't uh there aren't any other bandit raids at this point, but at this point, I will ask if everyone except for Angel uh, head to the back rooms, please. Uh, uh, Car Carlo, you know what to do, unfortunately. Oh <laughs> my god! So yeah, Wyra, Roz, and Lou, I'm going to need you guys to step into the back rooms. All right. Bigby, don't leave me! <laughs> um... Oh, shit. Lou also so did hear that. Hi. Hi. How you doing? <laughs> Good. <laughs> so, Arachion, you are staying watch at the beginning of uh, the night. Um, the fire is still crackling, illuminating the campsite around you. Uh, starting to die down a little bit because you do know better than to leave a actual campfire blazing in the middle of the outlands so it is starting to slowly die down at this point but it's still going to the point where it's giving uh, warmth for everyone to sleep around uh, as you are sort of sitting around in this area what is Arachion kind of immediately thinking about at this point um, honestly, he's more relishing in his victory, and, you know, it's just, you know, looks down at the container that he has uh, with the eye in there, and actually, he might even just pull it out and stare at it. Like, like just pull it and just marvel at it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you are staring at this token that you got in your... Uh, challenge with Liza, and I'm guessing it's like in a sort of like glass jar kind of thing or something. Yeah. 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 So yeah, you're so you're staring at this jar with this to with your token, which I'm just gonna keep calling it that because otherwise <laughs> we're we're gonna get flagged for being disgusting. We're you're gonna get flagged for being disgusting. With all the optic nerves okay, and, okay. Oh, so, yeah. Okay, okay. You are staring at this, thinking of sort of the rush of adrenaline you had in the fight, the overwhelming uh, feeling of victory afterwards, your sense of sort of your sense of thrill in this uh, Outlands tradition and even just in the fight itself and in the back of your mind you hear a voice um, it's a voice of it's not your own voice, and it's not a creepy voice at that, but it's the voice of someone you know. It's... God, hold on. Now I gotta actually find my notes. Uh, Yuri. It's... You hear this feminine voice that you know, know you have heard before and you know it sounds familiar and you know it's not Liza and it says <laughs> it's not Liza but you hear this voice in your head go we need to talk can you step away from your group for a moment you can reply to this message I'm guessing that's Sharice it's Charisse. <laughs> Why would I do that? You wait for a moment and then you hear another reply. Go, all right, fine. 
I do know a lot. Of can I at least make my way towards you without you freaking out the rest of your party? You can reply no. to this message. Oh, sorry. Uh, <laughs> I forget the casting thing. Uh, he's going to say, don't you take one step near this camp. If I even see the what the saint ah fuck. if I even see a glimmer of your robes or any part of you I will blow you to kingdom come. You wait for a little bit. And it seems like she isn't going to respond again. It's and at that time you think that everything is going to be all right, but then you hear a another response. Please, Raycon, it's important. Um, it's that important. Tell me over here. Tell me over the line. I see. You wait for a little bit, and then, because you know, I'm gonna say, roll me an Arcana check. That's real quick. Good thing I'm not good at that. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know that the way that she's doing these sort of quick uh, things towards you, she's kind of relying more on the cantrip message than she is like actually telepathically communicating with you. As it's as the cantrip message is something that is kind of more easier to use rather than. A actual telepathic thing which doesn't always isn't always something that clerics do especially clerics of Sorith but you wait for a little bit you wait for a little bit you get this sort of for lack of better words a light buzz in the back of your head and you hear wait first light do you have any idea how irritating it is to try and find a freaking mage or some other artificer who has a spell tech device for tele telepathy. Sorry, uh, my my thing had died. Oh damn. Yeah, don't worry. I'm here though on my phone. I'm I'm gonna charge my thing up. All right. Um. Yeah. So. So yeah. No, you hear. So you. Uh, to reiterate what I was saying, you wait for a little bit after realizing that um, the spell that she was using to communicate with you is uh, more of a cantrip than like the actual like telepathy spell. So you wait a little bit and eventually get this sort of buzz in the back of your head and you hear Teresa's voice go, you know, you're lucky there was another her artificer here who had a telepathic spell tech device. Now there aren't any issues. What do you need? Look, I know that you're angry and to be fair, you have every right, but we came there's a reason that the band lord is getting back on the hunt with you and it's honestly and also we heard that you were at the crescent hollow at alessia's territory which i'm giving you warning this with what happened there, this hunt is only going to make the hunt is only going to get worse for you. You don't think I'm aware of that? 
I did what had to be done. I was on a job that, for honestly, half of it wasn't even in the details, but I did what I had to do. I understand that, but the reason that the hunt for you is back on the wagon again is because someone has been taking out members of the Lions during scavenges, during raids. Okay. And and originally, Avis thought it was you. And with what happened over with the Night Heralds, he's thinking that even more so. But there's something else at play here, Arachion. And what do you expect me to do about it? What, help? Help? The people that I loved the most, the people I trusted the most, monsters, you want me to help you people out. I'm just saying that these attacks on the lions have been getting worse, and Avis... He's, I'll admit he is getting paranoid, but I've looked into some of the sites and where I've seen our I've where the lines were taken out, and something about this doesn't really quite add up. I mean, yeah, I know that you've definitely knocked a couple of our there's once in a bit, but. There's something else here that doesn't seem quite right. Why are, why 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 are you doing this? Exactly. You are you're supposed to be one of the most loyal people. You're one of the people that Avis trusts the most. And yet you're contacting me, the enemy. Why? Am, why am. ask for my help? I'm not asking for your help. I'm warning you that whoever's actually going after the lions might actually go after you if they know who you are. And you're right. I am loyal to your... I am loyal to your uncle. I am loyal to Avis. But I am also loyal to my... I am also loyal to the god who I swore under. And... Despite my loyalties to the Ban Lord, my principles under the first light come first. Avis knew that. You knew that. Thanks for the warning. But if they come, then so be it. Better to die going out like... Better to die like this than to be taken and captured by a bunch of monsters. Yeah. Hey, right, fair enough, but... You know, there are still... A couple of us within the Lions that actually did care about you. You do realize that, right? Despite everything that happened? The way I the way I saw it. I highly doubt that. And even if you did you or anyone who, d who did, it doesn't change the fact that you still are in league to him. That you would condone raiding villages for the supplies, killing 
doing things that we, as lions, were never even meant to be doing. That was for the dogs. Those were for the heralds, the reavers. We weren't supposed to be a part of that. But then you and everyone there sunk. And I was drowning. And I was drowning. So, love me, hate me. I don't give a fuck, to be honest. Prove it to me. Hmm? What about Elwyn? Do you think he would have followed you? Betrayed you? The way you see it? Of course not. He... He was smart. Unlike... Unlike the rest of you. He would have surely... He surely would have followed me. He would have went with me. I know the two of you shared some of the same ideologies and trust me it doesn't feel good to even bring up his name to try and defend anything against you not that I am but you know what this whole conversation here it just cemented my it cemented everything that I'm that I plan to do. And what's that? Like I tell you. Let them come for me. Maybe I deserve it. If being a monster is what it takes to be in this world. And then he's gonna, he's gonna want to, he's not gonna speak at all anymore. He's just gonna tone her, like, zone her out. You hear a sigh. And then silence. Eventually, after a good few, after a good beat or so, you feel that sort of same buzz in the back of your head. And you know that... She disconnected the telepathic link and has left you to your thoughts once again. And he, uh, he's gonna put the jar away um, into the into his holding bag. All right. Um, can you ping Carlo and then step into the back rooms for me, please? Alrighty. <laughs> <laughs> Suffer. All right, I shall see you. Bye. Hi. <laughs> 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 So, time passes on throughout the rest of the night. You take the last shift. Um, at this point, the campfire has gone completely out. There are traces of maybe a few embers left within the ashen wood. What do you think Yuri is kind of thinking in his head right now as he's standing watch? Yuri... Um again is like wondering if taking Eliza's eye you know is the right thing leaving a trail of blood and then you know just like because this continent's fucked <laughs> and it's like um he's just like it's the the thing of like how much can he contribute um before something inevitably happens to him um, so he's just, I would say, just, like, worried. Um, I wouldn't say, I don't know about, like, scared or afraid, but, like, probably worried. You kind of sit there, going over your thoughts, 
sort of your concerns, wondering if your ties with Raycheon and the rest of this group are necessity at this point, or if you're just here because of the fact you all end up being thrown in a, jo in a job together because Callie thought you would work well. Um, you are sort of filled with these thoughts, sort of swimming back and forth in your head. And, af and then suddenly you hear the sound of an older voice kind of sort of cut through those thoughts as Raffenfell kind of walks up and sits next to you. Top of for your thoughts, my friend. Oh, you startled me. I didn't realize you were here. After everything that happened, I still find it surprising that some of my comrades have been able to sleep at the very least. Yes, I... How have you been feeling ever since, like, I know things have been crazy and so fast, you know, everything's been crazy, so how are you? Uh, it's not the worst thing I've encountered, but I will say that I am more worried about my apprentice more than myself. Kind of looks over and you see Matthias with the rest of the mages kind of rest, uh, still resting. Um, I won't pretend that you don't already know that this place is dangerous, but yeah, I, I'm just glad, you know, you and all the other mages are safe. You know, I'm, I'm glad you guys are all right. As am I, my friends, but I will agree that the Outlands aren't exactly for those of the faint of heart. I'm honestly surprised that Matthias even came as far as he did on his own. It is his first time out here to begin with, and for me, I've had my fair share of travels across these lands more so than anything else. Sir, I hope you don't mind that I, um, I, you just seem like a pretty knowledgeable man. I hope you don't mind if I ask advice on something. No, not at all. Not at all. What seems to be on your mind at this point? So, I just, I never really... I, sir, I never really, uh, was, I never really knew my dad, and my dad never knew his, so, you know, I just, I never really had just kind of a positive male role model pushing me in the right direction, I never really could figure out, you know, what the definition of masculinity is for me. And sometimes it just means anger and violence. And I just, I, there's times when I wonder if I'm just like, if that's all that, you know, this life is. He looks at you for a bit, then turns to kind of look at the stars, and as he does, he goes, What you might see in that manner, live, being a resident here within the Outlands, is most likely something that could be seen in a different light within Tyrus. You see, you can see myself. I am a I am a man years of age. One of the few Archmages within the Arclight Order of 
of the nation of Tyrus, but... A long time ago, that wasn't necessarily the case. I was actually I lived within the streets of one of the city-states within Tyrus. What many in that point might refer to as a street caster. I had some knowledge of the arcane, albeit I wasn't very good at it at the time, but I still knew my way around a quick spell book or two. And I worked to make my way to where I am now. I met the right people who eventually led me to one of the academies within Tyrus, and from there I started my own journey into discovering what it meant to, well, in, to put it in the way that you're asking, what it meant to be my own kind of man. A man doesn't necessarily have to be all muscle, all of a fighting spirit. A man can be someone who thinks on his feet in dangerous situations. A man can be as kind and as caring as, say, a, as say a cleric, or a, or a mother. But the ways that a man acts doesn't define whether or not he is a man but of what kind of man he wants to be. Hmm. Yes, sir, that makes sense. I... And I... I hope you'll forgive me for randomly dropping this on your lap out of nowhere. <laughs> no, it's quite alright. It's not the first time I've had a conversation like this before. I've had my fair share of children, both as apprentices and as my own offspring. Uh, you're right, by the way. I think, um, I just, I think I just have to I gotta tread your path. I don't think I've... I just... Sometimes I can't feel like I... Can't help but feel like I've run out of time already. You know? It feels like I've already kind of decided what man I want to be. And that doesn't really ever change. Tell me. Do you actually have a family of your own? I do. And would you say you have been a good fatherly figure to them, or at the very least, a good role model for your partner? I don't know that I can say that I've been a good father or a good role model for my wife. Do you love them? Yes, sir. I do. A lot. And would you do anything to ensure their safety, no matter the consequences? I'd move the planets if they were in their way. Rathenfell smiles, places his hand on your shoulder, looks to you, and goes, 
And that is the kind of man that you are. You don't have to be like me. You don't have to be like your draconry friend there. You don't even have to be like the kobold. You just have to be yourself. Um, Gary looks at the fire thoughtfully. Um, he says, Thank you, sir. That makes a lot of sense. I... Yeah, I... Um... <laughs> Wise words, sir. I'm appreciative. Well, I have lived a long life. I will admit maybe a little longer than some of my race, but knowledge and wise and wisdom come through experience. And from what it sounds like, your experience comes through compassion, through caring. That in itself has its own wisdom that could, that is of the same integrity as my own. Um, Yuri thanks him again um, and it offers him a handshake and says, I, I think you're a good man, Rathenfell. I think you are as well, my friend. He takes your hand, shakes it, turns to you, uh, turns to the stars, and then quickly uh, for a quick bit, and then back to you and goes, if, if it's not too much, do you mind if I ask, what did end up happening to your father? Uh, I... I don't know. <laughs> the truth is, sir, that I've been trying to figure this out for eons. My father... Okay. So, forgive me for laying this out in layman's terms, because the truth is, sir, I have no idea how magic works. But there has been, for as long as I can remember, a generational curse that one day the patriarch of the family um, up and vanishes without any trace any warning there's no set time he just disappears one day um, for my father his father disappeared when he was young so he had time to kind of get to know him I never um, got the chance to know my father because he was gone before I was old enough to have memories. I, you know, I've asked several family members, but I, no one really seems to know what's causing it. And I don't, I'm not sure how to approach it, sir. I see. It does seem a rather curious tale, and it does explain why there haven't been as many Genasi of your brand within this area. I've traveled throughout several regions of Mithrin from the... from here to Tiris, and I've even spent some time within Elisari, and there are other fire genasi that do exist that do not pose this predicament or house is definitely a interesting thing uh, seems 
my situation is a little bit unique. <laughs> I... I, uh... I suppose I'll try and hit the books, you know, but I'm a very... I'm a very simple-minded kind of guy. Um, but, you know, if... I've, I'm not sure if you've ever heard anything similar happening to maybe any other races where the patriarch just disappears one day. Um, no, it's been not that I am aware of, but alas, for as for as wise as I am, I have not read every book within the archive of the Arclight Order, but. I can at the very least make a few inquiries, see if there is anything that can be pulled up in regards to a curse of this manner. That would be that would be great. Thank you so much, sir. I really appreciate it a lot. Of course, and I will say the way that it is phrased that you phrase it as it does make me think of if at the very least maybe a couple of things the f for example the fact that it is something that happens with each generation it and there's always at least key factors into at the very least who vanishes it is always a member of the more masculine side of the family, as you phrased it, the patriarchy. From never someone of the opposite gender. In that case, best I can assume at this moment is in older times, dating to around mid to, to around late first era to maybe sometime around the second era of recorded history the gods always held some form of champions and in most cases those champions were of men but the ways that they were indicted into being such, never in circumstances like this, but that would only beg the question of which god would have certain ties within your family. Now, not to stereotype or anything, but the fact that you are a fire genasi automatically makes me assume maybe something that ties to the goddess of fire, Rhea. But honestly, there have been several convoluted things about that, but about the primordial goddess of fire to begin with. I mean, it was not that long ago where there were records within the Outlands of someone possibly impersonating her. You can impersonate a god? Well, from what it was heard, from what I heard, it was quite incidentally, but there have been moments where certain tricksters or con artists have used their abilities to make it seem as if it was divine magics. In this particular case, the person in question appeared in with very similar characteristics as Rhea herself as she was a very powerful wielder of the element of fire and was known to have red hair but one interesting thing was that this didn't was that this person was around 
quite a bit even before those accusations. As there were... As... During some time in the era of silence, there was someone with that similar description who was in charge of a of a pirate skyship, of all things. Strange. Yes. But, unfortunately, there's not really much else known about it. Uh, several members of the Tyrian government investigated this incident, incident and as far as we know, there aren't any public records to be noticed, but aside from that, there have been other cases of certain fey pretending to be gods, but well, let's be honest. They're fey. Yeah. They are gonna do random shit all the time. Forgive my elders. They are. Uh, no worries, no worries, but I will say that the in this case it makes it even more tediously annoying than most as a fae is known as a god of trickery as well. A god of trickery? Well, surely you know of the arisen deity Odako, do you not? I'm not very religious, I'm afraid, so I wouldn't be familiar. Well, Odiko came around the same time as a good chunk of the rest of the Arisen deities, about around over a hundred years ago, right after the Era of Silence. And not a lot was truly known about this particular god, aside from the fact that in all retrospective characteristics, he was, in fact, a fae. Whether, and whether or not Odiko was his actual name, or if it was a name that he decided to give himself once attaining his title as a god is unknown, but there have been various rumors that he was a member of a Archphase Council before attaining his title as a god. Hmm. Archphase Council before claiming his title as a god. And his domain, ultimately, when he, you know, ascended to godhood, was trickery? Or was it always trickery? Well, I mean, for a fey, trickery is their natural domain, so it only made sense in the eyes of those within Mithrin that his ascension to godhood would be associated with trickery in itself. That is strange. And what was uh, this? Oh, I'm sorry. No, I was just going to say, if you would like more information in regards to the gods, um, I do have a book that does talk more about the pantheon of Mithrin itself, you see he goes through his bag, pulls out a uh, pulls out a tome, uh, hands it over to you. Whether or not that might help you in your studies in regards to your father and your family's curse, I'm not entirely sure, but depending on who you come across, it might come in handy at the very least. Thank you, sir. Uh, I will... <laughs> I'm definitely going to look more into Otiko. That, that sounds like a, a lead, sir. I, you know, I haven't been able to find very many leads in my search. Um, thank you. Yeah. Well, 
With that said, I think it's about high time that a couple of us get what little rest we can before the light comes. Don't you agree? Yeah, I... Sounds like a good idea. He gets up and makes his way back to where the rest of the mages are for camp and leaves you to your book of the Mithrin Pantheon and the rest of your thoughts. And with that, let's go bring everyone else in. Hell yeah. I'll ping him. Alright. <laughs> I could just start spam adding Hello. everyone. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> that scared him back. Wait, why scared us back? What was written? Yeah, I just came back because I saw the message. I think. Oh, no, I was. It was taking you guys a bit, so I was just saying um, I could just spam at all of you guys. Oh. <laughs> And then you guys immediately started showing up. That would be a lot of spam, though. You have to spam, spam, uh, Roz, me, and uh, Lou, and uh, Wyra at the same time. Is Lou I can just do at everyone yet? repeatedly. Yeah. 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 Lou is still, still sleeping. Lou That's what I was trying to say. Oh Lou's still sleeping. He's going to be in the other VC forever. Oh. oh, that poor boy. Yeah. Oh, my God. That he didn't poor sleep enough last boy. night, didn't he? That's rough. Well, you can stay to sleep is yeah. fine, because I mean that—that's I would hate to like you know yeah. impede on that. He really needs his sleep. Yes, yeah. he does. Yeah, yes, he does. Okay, so with the last shift of the night done, the sun begins to rise on the Outlands, and you. I'll start to pack up and make your way back to Baron's Rest. Yippee. With no issues whatsoever. I say that, mm, but... That sounds suspicious. <laughs> <laughs> kind of sus. Yeah. Um, you do see that the settlement does look a little more for lack of better words worn in certain spots but then again it's the outlands shit's bound to be suspect subject to raid attacks every once in a bit but it looks like for the most part that the rest is intact it doesn't look like anything's heavily damaged you yeah you see matthias um kind of look around and you see that the rest of the mages are making their way over to a inn to actually sleep in a goddamn good bed and maybe stay for a few days before heading to checkpoint. Matthias turns to the rest of you guys and is like, well, I can't honestly thank you all enough for the help you had done, albeit very terrifyingly and disgustingly, and I hope I never see anything like that again. Mm. Um, I think for the most part, the rest of us are just going to stay here within the rest for a few days before making our way back to Tiris. Um, the we did send a message to checkpoints before we made it here to the rest to um, send some money over to the Sandy Drider so th to collect your reward. Um, We, I honestly can't thank you all more than enough for 
everything. It's a pleasure. Just glad you're all right. That's it. Well, I'm not like these guys. I will say one thing. If you ever contact the rest about anything like this ever again, you will find pieces splattered all over the floor. What we went through what we went through was entirely out of the contract. And I expect to get that paid. You will. And if you I walk show you. Um, okay. Um, well, I think I'm in need of a meal, a hot bath, and some actual fucking rest. <laughs> and Matthias makes his way out around to the rest of the rest. <laughs> so. Yeah, you need said, some hugs. <laughs> Sorry, that's for Angel's character. He needs lots of hugs. <laughs> yes, he does. <laughs> uh, with that said, uh, Big B, are you going to be following a Raytheon as he's walking off right now? I... Th- think I'll linger with the rest of the group. Okay. So, with that said, what would the rest of you guys like to do? G- give the dude a hug. <laughs> <laughs> I oh, wonder how he'd like- react if I just randomly walked up and just like started hugging him. So you're, a- so you're gonna like off. actively try and find a Regeon just to give him a hug. I'm so dead. <laughs> I mean, it's, a it's thing something do. I do. It's yeah. something I do. Yeah. <laughs> You're going to give this like 50 year old Kratos Dragon Man, a ginger Kratos Dragon <laughs> Man, a hug. Yeah, why not? It was the first for everything. You know what? You're not wrong. Um, Yuri, what about you? Um, Yuri. Well, do I see... Oh, who's texting me? Do I see Crystalina <laughs> heading out for her search for Rakeon? <laughs> oh my gosh. <clears throat> um, I don't think she's trying to hide it. Yeah, I'm not really sneaking off or anything. Okay. Um, yeah, Yuri will... <laughs> Yuri will come with just because he wants to see how this plays out. Okay. I also want to see how this plays out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, my knows God. Eric no! <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. So, with Here's that said. Don't get killed. Now, hang on. Before this happens, I need to, I need to ask a question. Uh, Roz, has uh-huh. Bigby ever hugged Eric before? I, yeah, we haven't workshopped this. Oh, this is going to get sad. <laughs> Oh, um, knowing a Raytheon, probably not. Oh. Okay. Wait, so Angel, oh, no. are you Big B or Raytheon? What's your character? Angel's a Raytheon. Okay, a Raytheon. This other way around. Sorry. Okay, so with that said, a Raytheon, where are you going at this point? <laughs> I'm uh, heading up to uh, the Sandy Drider. Going there to going up to Cal uh, Cali and get me a drink. Yeah, Cali. okay. Getting a bar. So, I'd say, like halfway to you getting to the drider, Crystalina and the rest of the gang catch up with you. Why are, are you just gonna immediately tackle <laughs> hug this guy, or are you no. actually gonna give him heads up? I'm getting. No, I'm gonna talk to him about it. I'm just gonna be like, "Hey, Arikion. Um, sorry. I. How are you? Who's asking? 
I'm confused as Wyra. Is that just like... Oh, no, uh, like, yeah, Arikion's asking. You're saying that in character. Yeah. Who's asking, uh, Crystalina Star, your teammate, your friend, hopefully? These guys just kind of followed me, but they don't need to be here. (laughs) Well, hopefully, when I get my payments, we don't have to deal with anyone. I don't have to deal with any of you guys anymore. Okay, well, um... Except for me, but obviously he's not saying that to Big B, but yeah, everybody else. I kind of slowly walk up to him. There's... I promise it's not creepy. There's something I really feel I need to do. Can I? No. That sounds incredibly, incredibly weird. <laughs> okay, Crystalina's just gonna risk it all and give this guy a hug. Oh, fuck. <laughs> oh, oh my as god. As soon as he sees the bat, her advance, uh, he's gonna step back and reach for his, you know, thing. <laughs> he's, in his head, oh, he's not god. seeing it as a hug. He sees that you're approaching him in such a, like, determined manner, like you're about to... Oh, go no. Like, oh, <laughs> oh no. I mean, okay, okay, I pause. No. As soon as I see him step back, I pause, and I'm like, okay, I'm not attacking you. I promise. I just wanted to give you a hug because you desperately look like you need one, whether you know it or not. I'm fine. I appreciate you're not. And then he turns around. Yep, that guy is in a severe case of denial. I'll try again another time. (laughs) Okay, so I don't think we're gonna have much luck with physical affection and Arachion, to be honest. You would be surprised. Um, I'm not giving up. You'd be surprised. Good, good luck on your mission. Yeah, that kind of went exactly how I thought it was going to go, to be honest. That was less violent than I expected. <laughs> I'm just glad I'm still alive. So, that that was a success in my book. <laughs> Sage what? I mean, hey, I haven't gotten my eyes gouged out. This is all Crystalina talking, by the way. Yeah. That's fair. Damn. I, that is like the... I should have over here. That'd be such a low. <laughs> <laughs> that is like the most subtlest, vicious mockery I have ever heard. <laughs> I mean... Okay, you all so, know that I do that in real life, too, so... Vicious mockery? Yeah. Usually not in a bad way, though. That wasn't Christina no, trying no, to be mean. No, no, if it hurt no, someone's no. feelings, it was unintentional. No. Oh, jeez. So, with that, you guys make your way inside the Sandy Drider. It's early morning, so once again, there are the couple of late-night patrons that are still around. And there, and not really much else. You see Callie come out uh, with a uh, pan in hand, just wax it on... <laughs> the bar countertop leaves a bit of a dent and she's like all right if you're not staying here for breakfast get the fuck out (laughs) you hear a lot of groaning a lot of complaints but she's like yeah 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 shut up either eat or get out it (laughs) sees you guys and she's like well shit if it isn't my favorite group throws the pan back into the kitchen you hear a bunch of clattering you hear a cat yowling for some reason I love Callie <laughs> Callie man she's so funny the fucking best <laughs> she looks to the rest of you guys and she's like damn you guys have been gone for over a week what the fuck happened too much uh, just some shit complications yeah okay well you know what i'll tell you this you guys for just this once i'm gonna give you all a free breakfast yes <clears throat> i mean hey. i mean yes <laughs> <laughs> you're too kind Kelly. yes yeah. well the only reason i'm doing this is because i want to hear every freaking detail about what the fuck happened she opens the door to the kitchen she's like hey todd Get all the burners going! Get your shit together, Todd. There's always a Todd. There's always a Todd. 
Always. Um, a few minutes go by. You guys have the closest thing to a nice full course meal that the Outlands can provide, which is not really full course. It's like a continental continental uh, hotel breakfast, but if it was in Fallout. <laughs> but I mean, it's still good. Yeah. And uh, after time goes by, y'all kind of relay what the fuck happened, and we just cut to sort of a scene of y'all sitting around a table, Callie looking at you, and is like, shit. No wonder you guys took forever to get back. Yep. It's all thanks to... What the hell? All I'm saying is that that wasn't in the contract, half of it. Yeah, I know. And, but, I mean, you know how shit goes. Sometimes things go by the book. Sometimes they don't, but... Yeah, no, that, that, that... That kind of went six ways to shit town, and... Actually, that explains a few things that happened within this last week or so. I guess. More people looking for me. Well, I did hear some rumors about that, but... Actually, wait, no, you wouldn't have heard about that, now that I think of it. I would have been on the road at that point. Oh, but, uh... No, what I was actually referring to is that, uh, actually a couple of days ago, Night Herald's got fucking attacked, dude. Say what? Yeah. No, nah, I don't know how, but... Uh, say that again, Angel? I said, this is while we were on the road back to here. Yeah, like, maybe two days ago or so? Uh, I mean, I have several connections throughout the rest of the Outlands, I mean, but, uh, no, apparently a couple of days ago or so, someone actually managed to get inside the freaking hollow and just went to town. Holy fuck. From what I heard, about, like, maybe a third of the Herald's forces were cut down? Oh. Hmm. Do you have any idea who might be responsible? Mm. Well, whoever it was, they didn't give a name, which is actually even more creepy about it, but what we do, I mean, from what we heard, it was, uh, what we heard, which was even the more weirder part, was it wasn't even a whole army that did this. It was just like a couple of people. I have a theory. And actually, I'm gonna need to talk to you both. Any points to uh, Callie and Bigby alone. Arakian, what the fuck did you do? I didn't do anything. It's what people are trying to do to me. The other two minor kids. Oh, shit. This is exactly, honestly, what I was coming here. I was going to get a drink, talk to you and Bigby about something that happened while we were camping. But. Alright. Um, looks to Yuri and Kristalina is like, uh, give me and the boys here a couple of moments, would you? Sure. That means back rooms? Uh, yes, for this case, we're going back rooms again. <laughs> okay. If it takes if it takes more than 30 minutes, I am out of here, because I need to do homework. That's fair. And it's been two and a half hours. I will see you. Okay. Oh, I missed her already. <laughs> <laughs> so, Callie pulls you to out from the front area of the dryer, um, towards actually the back you pass the kitchens you see 
uh, the Goliath Todd still working behind the kitchens. Um, to, uh, she eventually takes you to this sort of ramshackled back office, closes the door, locks it, looks to you, and is like, okay, what the fuck did you do? Again, it wasn't something I did. Something like someone's trying to do. Well, obviously so, you had something to do with it, otherwise we wouldn't be here. Well, let me tell you. So, after everything that went down there, and once we got the mages out of there, we stopped by the camp to, you know, rest up and make sure that we have... Counting our supplies, making sure we have enough back to the trip for the rest. Right. But, when I was keeping watch, someone reached out to me. It was an old member from my lions, from my old lions days. She is, was, like, almost like a pseudo mother figure, one might say. But she called me telepathically, and she told me that not only has Hunt improved, it like increased in size and scope, but also someone's been going around murdering lions. Yeah, I did and hear something about that. Honestly, I thought it was you, because, well, I know how much you fucking hate them. Trust me, I hate them, but... If I wanted to kill them, I would have done it years ago. Oh, I only that's ran. Fair, that's fair. But this person's trying to kill lions, and not only is it adding to my, uh, not only is it adding to my uh, entire operation of just wandering, but everywhere I visit, most likely, will follow suit. Hence why I'm guessing that's why that place got ransacked. Uh, you got any idea who actually is behind all of that? There's no one I know who's... Well, honestly, everybody in that clan is a suspect, considering what they've done in the past. But... I'm don't know. All I know is that I this may be one of the last times I come here. Because I don't want to keep I don't want to bring this place down because of me. You, you see she sighs and like pinches the bridge of her nose and she's like Raycon, you do realize that technically we're under the protection of the sisters, right? Yes, but the Night Heralds were under the, gar the guidance of the Night Heralds, it, it, and someone from the Lions, who are their allies, are ransacking their place. And I highly doubt that an ally to the Sisters, the Night Heralds, and the Lions is one of their enemies, or rivals, or whatever. I, I don't think they'll have a problem with coming this place and destroying it. Even no. if there is protection, I still don't want anything to come here. All right, well, look, from what it sounds like, none of the other clans have actually taken credit for it, which is actually the most surprising part, because something to this degree you would expect from a raider clan, but let me, let me make a few inquiries before you start going out of your own and casting yourself out of this shit of a place but because if this is just some if this is just a couple of people who are unassociated with the raider clans then you might be safer than you thought yes i understand where you're coming at but you have been coming here to the rest multiple times over the years and at this point you're the closest thing to a local a raider can get because let's be honest you're let's be honest yuri the genasi you've been hanging out with he's a local but let but he ain't no raider 
I mean, he's got he's got a family for crying out loud. When was the last time you heard about a raider who actually had a biological family? My uncle. Just kind of blinks for a second is like, shit, I forgot about that. And he's My point is, yeah, that's even worse. My point is, you're a part of the rest, whether you like it or not, which means... You're stuck with us, and we're stuck with you. So deal with it, because we're ha- we have to deal with your chaotic bullshit. Yes, well, that is all well and good. If as much if I am a part of this as, as you guys say I am, I don't want it to be destroyed because of me even just being here. Oh please, we get attacked by raiders at least three times a month. But. Yeah, but he... Look, the Raytheon. Just... I mean, where the fuck will you go? You'll and you just end up traversing around the Outlands, and the fucker's gonna catch up with you eventually anyway. So no matter where you go, it's... And not only that... Do you have any other connections to any other settlements within the Outlands that aren't a part of the Lion's Territory? I mean, there are the, the, the neutrals. I mean, yeah, but even then, neutral settlements still lie within raider territories i mean hell the rest is considered a neutral settlement and we still have occasional protection from the sisters when i spoke with sherry she had been a strange honestly my plan was just to keep running all around the outlands and to have a wild goose chase i mean i ran for this long all right well look if you really want to make sure that we stay safe and out of it why don't you just contact the sisters, stay with them for a bit, and if things die down, then things will die down, okay? That can be arranged. Man, he's gonna look to Big B, he's gonna just look. He's gonna say, As much as I really would enjoy your company, you being with me is like the least safe thing possible. I've been through a lot of unsafe things with you, and I've made it this far. I mean, this fucker's already survived the lions once. Sorry, Big B. No mistaken. Yeah, no, think, Arachion. Think about it. From what you have told me, this little guy has survived not only a raid from the lions, but also has survived being at the heart of Night Herald territory. Do you have any idea how many people can actually say that? Now, let's be honest. Now, let's be honest. We've all been in the heart of a raider clan territory before. I've been... Well, she. you see she kind of stutters for a second as like... Okay, believe it or not, I actually used to live within freaking Wyvernack territory when I was a, when I was younger. All right, a lot of my a lot of our kin are. Yeah, I, I do know that. Yeah, no, but we've all seen shit within involving raider clans or being a part of raider territories, and from what I've heard. This kid can manage himself, and from what it sounds like, you need as many people by your side to help you as you do. And as much as I know you would like to ditch everyone else that is out there, you might actually need their help more than you think. If I can't drag them into this, especially not Yuri, Yuri has a family. All right, that might be the case, but I mean, he's, but let's be honest, him and his family are the only fire genasi with 
in the Outlands that we know of. And if word gets around that there was a Genasi within Night Herald territory, it, as much as I hate to say this, but you were right about one thing. This whole contract ended up going farther than I think any of us would have thought. I'm just worried because nope. the way the way she told me, the way she warned me about it, it transcended our hatred, my hatred. Well, you said she was she you said she was like a mother figure to you and is this like is this like one of the same people that's like you used like this was a part of like your little circle back in the day, right? So I'm guessing this was like the uh Sorth the Sorinth religious chick. And yeah, she was here when we first left. The See, mysterious that also explains it. See that also explains it. You know how a lot of those first light fuckers are. I mean, hell, you're traveling with one of them. Yeah, but he's not an asshole. Just because the group they associate with are assholes doesn't necessarily mean that certain beliefs they follow are. I mean, I've met a few of the followers of the First Light before, and as much as I like to, to deny that they all yeah, as much as I like to say that they all suck which honestly some a good chunk of them do because I mean come on let's be honest so the whole idea of being a religion behind the prime deity of light making sure that civilization reaches its glorious peak it, 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 it's all a bunch of crap I, I'm not really one for religion but but they do that being said, they are, they do tend to follow their core religious beliefs very strongly. And if your friend is anything like the followers I've met, she's going to follow those beliefs as well, whether it goes against the lion's core struck, core beliefs or not. So. Yeah, she say that. I know this is like the last thing you want to hear, especially from me. But I. Th but that being said, I think most of these folks are probably going to be safer around you than without you. I mean, that Christina chick. She doesn't even look like she's lived within the Outlands for a year. You leave her off on her own, who knows what sh who she'll come across. Well, I mean, case, I mean, could have remained here in the rest. Yeah, okay, but that, but still, if what you're seeing is true, I mean, yeah, best case scenario, she could either be here in the rest or a part of the freaking Black Rose Traveling Circus Troop, which, honestly, they're not half bad, but the only downside is that most of them are tieflings. I still don't understand... Yeah, I still don't understand that lot much, but that's not the point. That's the best case scenario, is either staying here at the rest or being a part of a circus troop, which... Honestly, I thought it was the same. Th I honestly thought the same thing when I first saw you with Bigby here and being like, ain't no way this kobold is going to survive. But no offense, Bigby. You thought I'd do better in a circus troop? I mean, you, I mean, you are pretty fast and dexterous. You can make a hell of a trapezist. I will try to not take offense to that. Fair enough. My point is, you guys have already gone this far together. And I'm not talking about Bigby here at this point. I'm talking about the rest of the guys that are waiting out front for us. Perhaps. I'll keep them with me. But as soon as things... 
as soon as things I go know. south, I will have to break away from them. And that I also know. means for Bigby. Because I cannot afford, especially you, the one person in this world that I care about. I cannot afford to have you dead because of me. You can do your best to break apart from me, but I don't think it'll happen. Dude, Cassie, Callie kind of looks at you and it's like, you do realize this is partly your fault of Raytheon, right? Yeah. I figured. Well, not really. He snuck into my bag, so... Not your fault for having a bag. All right, but exactly. regardless, regardless, I, as much as I hate to say this, because I know Yuri's wife will probably want to skin me alive with a fucking uh, pan after I say this, but Yuri probably should meet with some of the sisters. I think that that should be a thing that he and his wife decides. Well, that being said, there's a favor he's asked of me and has entrusted with me for years now. But I believe that some. I mean, as much as he would like to go through a lot of this freaking knowledge himself, there are possibly some things that the sisters might be able to discuss with him that I'm sure shit won't be able to figure out. No, I'm not going to tell you exactly what this favor is because it's not my job to. You know how it goes. All you need to say is that all you need to tell him if you want to convince him to try and go is that just tell him that I think it's a good idea for him. He'll probably figure it out as to why. And if not, well, then tell him to come talk to me about it because I can just just speak freaking as dull as possible. Very well. We'll see. I guess right. you should now, go back up with them. Yeah, no. Get the fuck out of my office. <laughs> and then he goes. Alright. Time to ping them again. And looks like Wyra dipped her homework, so we just gotta ping Carlo. <laughs> And then there were four. Well, I mean, for coming back, this actually isn't half bad. Yes. Yeah. I have returned. <laughs> what the fuck and is looks up? like, yeah, it looks like Wyra went for homework shit, so we lost her completely. Oh man, it wasn't even it wasn't even thirty minutes yet. <laughs> You know what? Well, just well, I mean, hey, homework's a bitch, even in college. Amen. So that being said, that being said, uh, some time goes by, and uh, Arachion, Bigby, and Callie come out from where the kitchen is. Um, oh. Sorry. All good. Oh yeah, Wyra. Um, she hasn't left. There's no point in being on the call alone. Which I mean, that's fair. Fair enough. Okay, who's watching TV? <laughs> Is that me? Uh, Y'all can hear the TV on my end? Yeah. yeah I'm gonna say yes, because I don't think anyone else has the TV on. Oh, shit. I wish y'all told me that, like, when we began. I didn't realize it until now. Yeah. Wait, is it, like, 
the background? It's only yeah. like every once in a while, and it's not that distracting for me. So yeah, I like tuned it out already. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's not that bad. So I'll hear it on the VOD as well. Because if it is quite loud on the VOD, um, I'll go to a different position. Yeah. I'll go to the so I'm side. guessing Vira is gonna just start primarily focusing on homework at this point, which is fair. If she comes back, we'll just recap for her. So, yeah. Raytheon and Big B come back with Callie to the main part of the Drider, and then Callie goes back to uh, looks at you all and is like, "All right, well, it looks like you guys need some shit to talk about. Um, I'm gonna be go. I'm gonna go and serve some of my patrons." Gets uh, starts to sniff a little bit, turns to the kitchen, and she's like, "Oh God damn it, Todd." walks back into the kitchen <laughs> as you all start to smell uh, something burning. How is it oh, always God. a man named Todd? It seems <laughs> like a weird oh. phenomenon. I... You fucking up, man. <laughs> I'm a name. This is the Biggs and Wedge of our D&D group. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah, Todd and Daryl. No matter who's gaming, there's just a guy named Todd. <laughs> there's just always a guy named Todd and everyone's a bit. There's his friend Daryl. Daryl, oh my god. So yeah, no, at this point, you guys are back at your table. Um, possibly still eating breakfast? I don't know. Uh, yeah, we, uh, no, I think we, I, I finished breakfast at least. Uh, I think I'm just now drinking. Yeah. Continue, Carl. Yuri's a slow eater, though. Um, but he'll be like, did you guys have a good conversation? Yeah. Yeah, as good as it can possibly be. So, something's come up. Something's come up? How do you mean? Yeah. Well, so, well, I guess uh, now that I'm not going to be doing the other thing that I was going to do, I can tell you. Uh, people are after me, as you probably already know, but they've taken that to a whole nother level. And I'm guessing that's why the Night Herald's uh, the Night Herald's base was entirely just uh, like cut down by a third. Uh, so, hey, Wyra. He's trying, to, he's trying to find. Oh, hello there. Welcome back. Hello. Hello. Yeah. Uh, Rick Young continues, and he's like. So, because of that, not only that, uh, someone's been going around killing some of our old team, uh, some of my old team members, and so now, they may be coming for me. And we need to head to the Sisters of the Flame. Uh, they're a raider clan that I know, uh, that I, they're, I'm allies with. They're, they're really uh, friend, good friends of mine. Okay. Um, do you, I guess then the assumption is that the Night Heralds, like, yeah, read it out and like told the lines that you were, got it. Um, oh, they, we, they were doing that, hence why I took that bitch's eye. But my initial thing to do was I was just going to leave everyone behind here so that no one has to die because of me being here. But, uh... Uh, fuck face in the kitchen there. She told me that I go to the... I need to go to the Sisters of the Flame. As you say that, in the back you hear, I heard that, you asshole! <laughs> Careful, she might not give you free food anymore. <laughs> I'm sorry, Kelly. <laughs> yeah, you better be, you son of a bitch. Uh, right. Todd, I told you, medium low heat. Brother, are you, you ever? Do know gonna... Sorry. Uh, sorry. Go ahead. Brother, are you ever gonna, you know, with Callie? Have you considered? What do you mean? Never mind. I. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, uh, I thought I'd tell you because you're the one here that I was mostly concerned for because you have a family. So, I'd highly recommend you uh, go and uh, 
Uh, yeah, tell them about that. Yeah, I. I mean, I was never. We were never gonna let you go on your own, first of all. But I mean. Well, I would have left uh, without you guys knowing. Brother. I mean, here's the thing: is yeah, we take a risk by going with you, but we take a risk going okay. anywhere here. So I mean. Um, it, if it weren't for Kelly's input, you all would have been left behind. Great. Well, <laughs> brother, I'll tell my family and then I'll go with you guys. Please don't call me that. All right, brother. Um, he stands and departs. Okay. All right. All right. So, yeah. Uh, Yuri, you... Sorry, I was fixing my vest. Um, you make your way out of the drider after breakfast. Um, I'm assuming you're making your way home? Sir, yes, sir. Alright, um, Arachion, where are you go gonna go after this? Let me answer your question with a question. Um... How long did they say they were gonna work up our payment for, like, to ship it into, you know, the, the uh, Matthias? Uh, Matthias said that he messaged the ch he messaged uh, the checkpoint outpost uh, a little bit before you guys arrive, and said that it should be there at this point. Oh, cool. Well then, yeah, he's gonna uh, he's gonna go and find Matthias. Okay. Um, not that hard. He, uh, last you saw him, he was looking for an inn, which honestly, the best one at this point is the Drider. <laughs> so, you don't have that far to go. Nice. And uh, he's gonna go and play. when he sees Matthias, he's say, like, "Hey." Oh, Arachion. Hey. It's I believe it's. Uh, I believe it is now time. Oh right, yes. Um, yeah, yes. no, I do have it. Uh, goes through his bag, uh, starts pulling stuff out: uh, a staff, a book, an owl, a parrot, <laughs> uh, spell component pouch, um, another long stick of wood that doesn't. That looks like. That doesn't quite look like a staff, but it sure shit ain't a wand. A Toyota um, Corolla? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, he's just pulling a bunch of shit out of his bag, uh, pulls out another book, another book, another parrot, another book. <laughs> <laughs> he just keeps alive parrots in his bag? <laughs> uh, you see... He pulls out like a couple of robes and whatnot. He's really having to go through his bag. Eventually, he grabs a big sack. Uh, not that big, but he grabs a sack. Um, uh, I saw that look. <laughs> oh. So he grabs a sack of what sounds like coins uh, and passes it over to you and goes, um, there should be about, uh, there should be about uh, 500 or so, plus a few assorted gems. Uh. We shall see. And he's going to sit down right in front of him and he's going to pour it out on the table and he's going to go through. Yeah. You pour everything out uh, onto a table. Coins start to clatter everywhere. Uh, cling, cling, cling. You hear... Um, you're, are you doing this like within the main part of the drider, or are you doing this like within uh, Matthias's room? Uh, Math it, that, there should be a table somewhere in uh, Matthias's room, correct? Like somewhere... Yeah, no, there is. Okay, good. Uh, yeah, he's just going to go over to a table and he's just going to pour it. And okay, yeah. No, because I was about to say, if you're doing this within, like, the main lobby of the Drider, you're going to get a lot of eyes staring at you. They can look as much as they want. Come to my money. Yeah, so you start to count it out. Um, 
there is there is about 500 gold which is occasionally useful out in the outlands as you know but hey gold is gold you can smelt it if you fucking want uh and there are about like five or so various gems of color and size uh you don't know offhand how much they would be worth but the fact that they're thrown in there uh you can assume that uh the higher ups in matthias's order thought they might be somewhat uh valuable and or useful uh, matthias also turns and goes uh, and um there are also a couple of extra you know, some uh so uh survival gear that I personally thought might be more useful for you than for me and the rest of this group here as we're making our way back to checkpoint uh, sometime tomorrow. Alright. And my partner's money. Oh, right. Um, goes through his bag again. Pulls out another staff. Pulls out a slingshot. <laughs> <laughs> pulls a 19th out Chevrolet Camaro. <laughs> pull, yeah, pulls out a deck of cards. Pulls out another deck of cards. Pulls out another. Uh, pulls out a belt with several different wands strapped to them. <laughs> um, okay. To be fair, this isn't all entirely mine. We had to really condense all of our stuff into one bag. Um, pulls out another robe. Pulls out a lizard. <laughs> pulls out a lizard uh, pulls out something in a metallic looking jar pulls out a- another uh, robe and whatnot and it's like you know what I'm starting to realize that this was a bad idea throwing everything into this you don't say yeah no um, I wish there was an easier I wish there was a spell that you could just use at a flick of something. Like, think of the thing you want, just flick your hands or flick a wand or something, and it just merely pops into your hand, you know? I mean, actually, I tried to petition something like that before, but um, the best I got was very dangerous, and I nearly exploded a wall within a classroom. Oh, okay. Well, hey, hey. Actually, let me tell you. Hey. actually, no, it was a wall, a whiteboard. A whiteboard? Several parrots. Hey, buddy. Oh, that's right. I don't, buddy, I don't... <laughs> Just give me my... So I can get okay, out of here. Right, 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 right. Yes, um... Now, I will say that most of this money actually went to you, but you can split it however you want, but, um... Pulls out just, a... Uh, well, I mean, it, it, it's not by much, just like maybe by 50 or 100 gold. On it. Honestly, they weren't entirely sure how to actually separate everything. It's not my fault. But it's. But, but I assure you that if you wish to split everything more evenly between you, your friend here, or the rest of your group, then. That is to do what you will. I mean, we have no say in that matter at this point. Um, pulls out another sack, uh, passes it over to, uh, kind of centers it between you and Bigby, and goes, uh, "This is about uh, about four fifty or so." So, are you saying that everything that you've given me was to split up amongst us? I mean, oh, no, like... no, 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 at, at, at your discretion, I wasn't assuming that all of that, as I said before, the deal was that you each would get a sum of gold and, or a, uh, a sum of gold, a item or whatever, a favor, something like that, and you two chose gold, and honestly, to be fair, a lot of the members of the Arclight Order are just a bunch of bureaucrats, so yeah, I'm saying that the people at the, Arc at the, the Order, I see. 
Uh, well, I'm, I, I mean, don't get me wrong. I enjoy spending, I enjoy my studies and whatnot, but I, I've, I lived in one of the city states that wasn't completely reliant on the Arclight Order. Um, actually, I lived in a town outside of the city state of Willowdale. Um, I actually, you, neither of you would have actually, have never actually been there. You're both residents here in the Outlands, are you not? <clears throat> He's just staring. Right. Um, backstory doesn't matter. Sorry. Um, but yeah, no, that should be about uh, 450. Actually, you know what? Um, goes through his own pockets, pulls out a scroll, a scroll, another lizard, a frog, a squirrel, oh, another God. scroll. <laughs> No, no. <laughs> no. No. I just like picturing that every single one of his pouches is filled with some mysterious animal and item. <laughs> that's um, a, yeah, that's no, no. Yeah, no. I'm just going to keep doing that with various characters uh, throughout this. But no, after pulling out a couple of scrolls, notebooks, and um, various other arcane knickknacks, um, pulls out a smaller sack and it's like well and it's like uh, to be honest i didn't really carry much but this should be like an additional 25 for your friend here that's fine you did because you did add extra gems into the bag i will personally give him what he is owed right um I'd say at this point that our business is concluded then, and... Finally. Now, as I said before, never contact again. If you need business, take it to another rest. I assure you, I don't think I'll be setting foot in the Outlands any time soon um i i think i've had my fair share and lord knows i need a fucking vacation you do that we're done here very well and then he walks um, out of the door. all right uh you walk out of the door and with that we will cut back to uh yuri you are making your way down the streets of uh, the rest, making your way back to your house. You open the door and you see your wife and kids are having a conversation in the living room on the table. <clears throat> Excuse me. They immediately turn their heads as the door opens and see you and smile and both of your kids are just cheering. Father! And just immediately run over to you and kind of envelop you in a hug. I uh, <laughs> scoop them both up and he like, he tries to stand and he's like, oh, I forgot you guys are big now. Lord. I <laughs> sets them back. Down. You, as as that happens, your uh, Natasha makes her way over to you and also gives you a hug. Not as impactfully damaging as your two kids but she hugs you gives you a kiss and she's like i was so worried about you you would have gone for so long you said there would just be a few days i know honey i know but uh, we ran into complications along the way it you know how these things are always ah uh, yes unfortunately i do but Yuri, you still worried me and the children, and what, and like, Kali, like, I talked to Kali every, like, a couple of times, and she said that you were a part, like, you said to me, you were a part of some, like, bodyguarding situation, and then next thing you know, we heard about a attack within Night Herald territory, and I just got worried for you. Honey, 
look, I, I know that with me out there, you know, it's easy to get worried, but honey, I can take care of myself. And, you know, I, I don't want you to constantly be stressed out about me. I, you know, this is, this is a life worth living. And I'm sorry that I... I'm, I'm just sorry that I stress you out very often. I forgive you, but... At the very least, did you find anything that... Like, helped you with what you were trying to look for? I talked to a mage. Um, who gave me a slight lead um, still you know don't have <coughs> excuse me uh, still don't have the full answer but um, I met a friend out there as well uh, who is part of this troop um, and there's another lead I need to follow which is I um I just wanted to stop by and check in. I unfortunately, my love, I do have to leave again. She lets out a sigh of kind of disappointment. It's like, oh, Yuri, I, where are you going this time? I know, I, honey, it's just, I'm just going to the, let me know if I get this name wrong, the Sisters of Flame. Um, That's enough. Okay. Um, hopefully, you know, they know something or other, and they can point me in the right direction. I have it on, uh, you know, I. My friend says he really trusts them, and they should be knowledgeable about this. If anyone is going to know anything about this, then it's them. You see. She kind of looks to you, kind of takes another deep breath, and is like, Man, at least it's over to the sisters. It's not as far as last time. Yeah. Um, but still, Yori, be careful out there, will you? I will. And... I know I stress you out, but I will be back before you know it. And listen, I just, I'm really grateful for you. I know I don't say that a lot, but I'm just, thank you. I know I'm not around a lot. And you were honestly the only thing that kept me going when I was out there. So I'm just, I'm really grateful for you for, you know, taking care of both Alex and the Katrina, Katrina, I can't pronounce that. Um, but just thank you. She smiles, gives you another kiss, and goes, oh, After this, you're spending more time with the kids, and if you end up going back on another one of these journeys, and it takes you longer than a week, I will burn you. You understand that, right? Yes, ma'am. Yes, she's I understand. Saying that she, is, <laughs> she is saying this kind of seriously, but she's also got some form... Like, by the way, she's saying this, you know that she... She's... It's not that she's joking, but you know that she's not entirely serious. Um, Yuri, after having been out in the Outlands and facing all kinds of fucking bandits and things, is not um, half as scared of the Night Arrows as he is uh, his wife. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but he's like, um, yes, I understand. I, 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 when I return, I will spend more time with you and with our kids, I promise. You have my word. Good. Now you should probably change out of that shirt. Like you look like you've worn it for that entire journey. Honey. Okay. 
Listen. Are those slash marks? Listen, honey. Here's the thing. When I go out on journeys, I only pack one shirt. Because why would you need more than one shirt? You know, it's durable. It's lasts a long time. Those mean the same thing. Uh, Yuri, I can see that, that that shirt is partly ripped. Honey, I don't need... Okay, fine. Yes, you're right. <laughs> he storms off. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so you eventually change out of your clothes, get a new shirt on, uh, and you see she Natasha looks back to you and is like, there. Was that so hard to do? No, ma'am, it wasn't. You were right. You're damn straight I was. <laughs> now... Go to the sisters. She kisses one of your cheeks. Get the answers you seek. Kisses your other one. And come back here in one piece. Kisses you on the lips. You understand? Yes, Sonny, of course I do. I have a feeling that if I went out there and died, someone, I won't name who, but someone is going to, uh, you know, storm whatever oh, yeah. place I end up, you know. Oh, no, most definitely. <laughs> okay. And I will bring Callie along with me because you know, and Callie along with me, and actually, no, probably not. It, it... Do you know what, honey? I can't help but wonder if Callie is a bad influence on you. <laughs> I could say the same thing to you, Yuri. She was the one that first recommended you to do this to begin with. Okay, well, yes, fair enough. But, um... I... Thank you again for everything. I should probably get going. Yes, go play with your friends, Yuri. She it's, smiles it's jokingly. And you see the kids... You see, like, r behind her, you see that the kids are just watching this in awe. <laughs> um, he kneels and then kisses both of his kids on the forehead and says, Papa will be back before you know it. Um, I have a lot of stories to tell. I met this dragon guy and he... He... Uh... Your mother was always better at telling stories than I was. But this dragon guy with, with a gun, and I will tell you all about it when I get back. You, you see Alex, uh, Alex just kind of looks and is like, You met a dragon? with? A, why would a dragon need a gun? Can't he just breathe? Like fire? You, it does sound questionable when you ask that, uh, but I never really... Yeah, um, well, <laughs> uh, <laughs> he says, I'll be back before you know it. Alex, please take care of your sister. Um, yes, Papa. Right. I'll be going. You embrace and kiss your family one last time before heading out of the house once again to meet up with the rest of the party um you guys all eventually meet back at the cruiser um is there anything else either Arachion or Bigby wanted to do before oh, excuse me before heading out to the sisters Oh my god, are they AFK? <laughs> Both of you are muted. Oh. My bad. <laughs> uh, I did have one thing. Uh, I wanted to visit our boy, the Trash Bandit. Yo! Yo! Okay. So, you head over to... Jock Um As weird as... Like, you've seen this place, like, definitely... Uh, filled with stuff before but as you walk in it almost feels like there's more stuff but it looks exactly the same 
<laughs> uh, you see as the door closes behind you, a head pops out of a corner and you see the doc and he's like, Well, it's been way too fucking long. Where the hell you been? Out on a job. A stupid ass job at that, but a job nonetheless. Uh, you know what that means. Was... Yes, yes. You weren't the one that was behind the, uh, the night hero thing, were you? No, I was not behind that. I don't know where that got, why that rumor got started, but it did not come from me. No, thank God someone, I, thank God. someone was most likely looking for me. Thank God I, anyone who has, ish, anyone who knows you, which honestly is probably not that many, knows that you have issues with night heroes as much as you do with lions. Yeah. So, when we hear that Night Heralds ended up losing some of their kin. I mean, it's not the first time that we heard of a clan and eventually ending up in a massacre. Oh, oh trust me. Oh, trust me. Uh, if I, even I, with the skills that I have, would not be able to take down half of that third of guards on my own. Eh, that's fair enough. Still. There are a couple of rumors saying that one of them actually used to be a night herald, and I don't really see you associating with him. Yeah. So, anyways. Anyway. Business. Business. So, uh, and then he's gonna reach into his pocket and he's gonna pull out a piece of uh, a slice of paper with some writing on it, and he's gonna uh, say, oh, "Okay." Did you get any of those stun and fire ammo in stock? Um, yes, yes. Uh, I did end up getting a little bit more of that. Uh, how much of each are you looking for, my friend? 30 of each. Okay, oh. Interesting. All right. I believe we can do. Uh, looks at the paper. Um... Now, uh, if I'm not mistaken, I'm guessing this is a materials list for what we talked about a long ass time ago. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> you the bullets, see, the, the, the stun and fire, yeah. Things, but you yeah, see, I think I'm kind of trust. Yeah, you see, Mandari look at this kind of raise an eyebrow which for some reason looks like it goes a little bit higher than it should <laughs> gives a whistle and it's just like sounds like you got the project going on my friends indeed something to add a little extra firepower to my name alright well now, would this piece of paper also have hypothetical schematics, or is it just a materials list? No, that's just a materials list. He, he hasn't written up the schematics yet, but he yeah. does know what it would mm -hmm. take. Uh, at, meanwhile, uh, actually, while, while he's looking at the list, he is going... Uh, Big B still with me, right? Uh, if Big B so wants to be. But I'm going to assume yes. Possibility for him. Oh, well, uh, <laughs> I'll just I'll just wait to ask uh, her when she when she yeah. back. Yeah. Um, but in the meantime, Mondari looks at the list and is like, uh, "I can get a good chunk of this uh, for you right now." Um, unfortunately, some of the more intense stuff, I have to contact a couple of some other scavengers. Maybe have them do a bit of a job for me and whatnot. Uh, might be able to talk to some of the other scrap shops in uh, within several settlements, but for the most part, I think I can get most of this for you. Okay, thank you. Uh, now, as for you know, waiting for uh, certain parts to arrive, I'm not really that much in a rush to start building it, so. If you can get it from someplace else, then cheaper, a little cheaper, then if it'll cost a little extra in terms of wait time, I wouldn't mind that either. 
Ah, I see, I see. You want to make sure you build first, make sure it's got done right. Isn't that right, my friend? And it also gave me extra time to actually work on schematics and stuff. Actually, you'll always get me the best. You always have. Yeah, uh, yes. I, I can make sure that you don't get any of that scrap piece of shit. Uh, actually, you know, I just saw that a bunch of those, uh, a bunch of those Borderland mages just showed up. Uh, might be able to talk to some of them, see if they can transfer something over to here. Sure. But in the meantime, I can at least get most of these materials for you and your ammunition. Nice. Whatever you can get for me now, I'll, I'll pay for up front. Anything else that when I come back from, uh, from where I'm going now, I can always just pay later. On another job, my friend. And you, as soon as he says that, you see he just immediately vanishes from the pile of junk. <laughs> Pops up another, another one further away. Sort of. But not really. More job security. Ah, uh, I understand. No one. You know, you're not the only one to actually order this. I've had a few people over the few years or so, but uh, actually, to be fair, I'm not the only scrap. I'm not the only scrapper that comes up with this kind of spell tech, you know. Uh, vanishes from where he was further away, makes this way somehow back to the counter. Uh, sets uh, cartridges down uh, for the set amount of each. Um, sets a few of uh, other materials uh, on the counter as well. And it's like, and that's almost there. Oh, wait. Pops vanishes again. Like, literally, is like diving in, dive, like, literally jump diving through one pile of just various knickknack trash, shows up immediately further away, vanishes again, shows up behind you, vanishes again, comes back to the counter, slams a, several more items onto the counter, just kind of brushes his hands and is like, no. I believe that is everything that I can get for now. Uh, do you need anything else, Rangara? <laughs> First off, I'm out of character. I gotta say, you know, most of this I can see is gonna be grounded in realism, but I love how cartoony this can, you, you can get. <laughs> the first thing was with she throwing the pan around, like knocking over cats and shit. <laughs> And now he's just popping in and out, teleporting really? through the gar garbage. Dark Mandari, Dark Mandari is the scrapper Scrooge McDuck. <laughs> oh my god. Jeez. But uh, he does say, now, along with these two types of ammunition, are there any other types of ammo that maybe came in or run me by the other ones that you've had already? Want something yeah. to go along with these? Yeah, let's see, you've got the stun, you've got the standard fire. Um, I think I have another one that is more suited with your, uh, natural born element, if you understand. Uh, give me one sec. Pops out again. V shows up. <laughs> you see, he just kind of he pops up, just kind of does a little scavenging round. You see, he's like throwing a bunch of stuff around, like, no, no. I was wondering where that went. No, no. <laughs> Grabs a few other ammo cartridges in your hit and it uh, holds it up in the air. You don't even see his head. You just see his arm in a bunch of trash. It vanishes. He shows up, sets down three canister, uh, three cartridges that look to be glowing a sort of green. And it's like, now these my these are a little more uh little more acidic. Uh they're ve very annoying, very dangerous. Um and it's 
one of the honestly is one of the more entertaining ones there is honestly another type of ammunition that i've been trying to get my hands on but as far as i know the only people and actually to some ironicity the only people that i know that have this special type of ammunition happen to be the heralds that's convenient yeah well they're the only ones that have shade steel pops out again bro <laughs> uh, goes looking around. I'm actually gonna roll something here. Dang, uh, the right gun drops his first bro. <laughs> yeah. Uh, pops bro. back to the counter again. It's like, uh, unfortunately, I think I sold most of the other spell deck ammo. And like I said, I can't get my hands on any of that shade steel one. Otherwise. Oof, I would sell a pretty... I would have to sell that very high in comparison to the rest of these. Yeah. Yeah. Heralds. Sometimes they're a bitch. Hey, man. Most of the time. <laughs> uh, well, whatever you can get for me now, that's, uh, that's fine. I'd say at this point for this, um... Actually, now that I think about it, do you ever work with Shade Steel before? Shade Steel? No, I don't think I have. I want to, though. It sounds like an interesting thing to work with. Um, yeah, I'm going to say, because we haven't rolled jack shit for this, I'm going to say, give me a... I'm going to say, give me a just straight intelligence check. Yeah, Roll good. <laughs> I keep accidentally clicking on the wrong thing. No, nope, that's also wrong. There we go. 22. Hey, good. 22! So, the <laughs> so after... So when you first hear about what Mondari is talking about, you can assume that it's the metal in the bullets that you saw in Liza's gun is this shade steel. <clears throat> so, and actually putting the two together... It does make it actually makes sense why the heralds are the ones that have it because first off, it's not something that is natural to the material plane here, but is actually a material that is uh, that is actually mined within uh, Shadowfell, which is which once if you think about it actually makes sense why you've never worked with it before or have seen anyone else work with it before because well for one if night heralds are as stingy as you have seen they probably wouldn't want to share this material as often as like anything else and if because if any other uh, artificer end up getting uh, shade steel it's would either be very it would either make a very powerful weapon or it would just be very terrifying to see someone with that kind of material that what isn't question. the heralds. On the topic of that, would okay, by just by looking at the scythe that Icarus has, is that made of shade steel? What I guess? Um by looking at Icarus's scythe, there are uh with a general with the general intelligence check on that one, uh, and the fact that it was a twenty-two, I will say that there are aspects of his scythe that appear to be shade steel, but the blade itself does not look to be shade steel. It looks to be something else entirely. Well, uh, and Raytheon says, so, uh, what have we got? What kind of ammo you got over here? Well, like I said before, we've got your standard fire ammunition. We've got the, uh, we've got the stun ammunition here and this lovely yes, uh, acidic ammunition, which, well, much like you, ends up dealing additional 
uh, acid damage to an opponent. Uh, I'm working on trying to get something a little more complicated in my in uh, in my inventory, but as of right now, the best I can do is the are these elemental ammunitions. Okay. Well, actually, you can hook me up with ten of those a sec, and then that'll that'll be it for my list. You see, he takes. Uh, he, you see that there were originally three set on there, so he takes two, uh, three cartridges on there. He takes two of them, throws them in the back. You hear a bunch of clattering, in a possible uh, small explosion. You see smoke kind of rising out of the back. And it's like, all right, uh, that can be it for you, Rangara. Indeed. Okay. Uh, let's see. We're... And just ends up doing the math, and now I got to remember how much I actually charged for the fucking ammunition. Inside. Wow. Sorry. <laughs> no, 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 that's not on you. Oh, fuck me, I never wrote a price on... Let's see, not on the... Did I write it on... No, I didn't. All right, um... So let's see. For a thing of ten, we'll say. Let's see. For a thing of ten, we'll say that each ammunition is. Let's see, you got five hundred on you. So if we do it nice. this way, uh, let's see. It's a ten. So it's. 10 for that, so it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. For that. Uh, and then. No, 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 we're not doing that. We're going to do it this way. Uh, with discounts, because it's. Hey, okay, maybe not that much. Uh, you see, after do you see, he literally pulls out like a couple of different calculators mm. at the same time, types in the number, throws the calculator, grabs another one, types even mo <laughs> more, and he's like, I think for this lot altogether, I can give it to you about uh, 400, 400 gold or so, if you got that. Actually, when he when you do mention that, he's gonna pull out of the bag he's gonna give put all of the gems that are in his bag i i didn't say this but i told this i said i i had messaged this to, to Roz that i had given big b uh half the gems that were in my baggie just mm -hmm. as an extra like you know just to do that yeah, so i yeah, wanted yeah. those gems out and i wanted him to see if he can add those like how much would that take off in price um, I'm gonna say, give me a persuasion check. All right. Uh, if I can find my skill, fifteen. Damn! I keep forgetting you have a minus one. Um, let's see, I'm gonna roll something now. If not take off, if, if not taking off the price, it's more like I guess saying how much those gems would equate to that, or we can just trade. Yeah. Uh, you see, uh, you see, Mandari uh, slaps one of the scopes across his goggles, across his face. Uh, you see it kind of glow with a sort of magical glint as he takes a look at each of these uh, gems that you have set out. Looks to you. Looks at the gems. Looks at the calculator. Back at the gems. Um, starts typing a little bit. Uh, now, how? So I know you said you gave about half of them, and I said there were. I, I honestly don't remember how many assorted gems I said there were. Uh, yeah, you didn't really give like an actual number. No, you just I said it didn't. Awesome. You say like there are different sizes. And they were just yeah. scattered there just for extra funsies. So, 
you so yeah you see he types uh on the calculator flicks the scope up uh looks to you and he's like eh, eh. <laughs> mood <laughs> Damn. <laughs> I am going to have to go a little bit early. Like, right now. <laughs> All right. Oh, wait. Oh, before, does, my, before... okay, does my voice really put people to sleep? Dude, no. I, I was going to sleep hard. That was nice. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, I, I don't know if you got it, uh, Roz. I did give you half the gems. <gasps> Thank you so much. Yeah, that were in like, cause like the, the gems were just kind of in there and they were scattered, and yeah. they want they didn't want to give you all the money that you were owed. So I was, and so you got four to seventy five in gold, and you got gems for me. All right, but okay. <laughs> Actually, I have somewhere to be in like thirty minutes. Oh shit! Yeah. Oh damn! We definitely been going late this time around. Yeah, dude. Mm. Uh, you guys yeah. have a good rest of the session. All right. Bye. 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 And then there were three. No, All right. No. Um, so after a bit of calculation, the doc turns to you and is like, okay, with the gems included, I say uh, three, 325. 325? I can do that. Okay. Takes the gems, takes 325 of your gold. You get, I'd say about, I'd say you get about half of, uh, I, actually no, maybe not half, uh, maybe close to uh, two thirds of your Oops, materials shit. list. Did I mean to add those? Yeah, you get uh, two thirds of your materials list. Uh, 30 pieces of fire ammunition, 30 pieces of stun ammunition, and 10 pieces of acid ammunition, which I will create later. Okay. Oh, shit. God damn it. <laughs> Let me just add back the 500, because I'm just fucking up. Damn, you are having issues today. I know. <laughs> It's, for some reason, the the oh, I mean, I get the reason, but like the default is adding and not subtracting. Oh yeah. Let me just. Uh... Good times. Good ass times. Okay, that's six. Okay, no, no. So minus one hundred. All right, now we're back at five hundred. Now minus three twenty-five. Okay, there we go. I'm, I'm okay. So yeah, you stick the cartridges on your belt. You stick the materials in your duffel. Damn. You said I got two thirds already. It's, I, I'd say I'd say about two thirds. Okay. So I don't have uh, I have just a little bit that I have, and it will I, I did want to also say to him. Uh, will you also uh, call in the rest that needs to be? That also needs to be, you know, on the. That's also on the list. I, well, of course, I'm gonna. I I put in a couple of calls for some of the stuff, but for a few things, I will have to uh, personally talk to some people around here. The rest, uh, the mages included, but I'll ensure that that gets taken care of today. Okay. Thank you. And uh, I'll just come back for those whenever I'm done with whatever it is I'm doing here. All right. Don't die. I'll try not to. But if I do, uh, if I don't, then sadly, I will have to see your ugly ass face again. Uh -oh. And you can see he's saying as a joke. Uh, uh, <laughs> you son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> and you walk out of Doc Mundari's. Um with that I think I will actually call the session here yeah so thank you all for listening I'm sorry some of our members dropped out but you know what that's life um, if you, 
Yeah, that's life. So deal with it. Um, we will be back next Sunday uh, for the next session. And I assure you it is next Sunday because I've got nothing else to do. Um, hopefully we'll have everybody here. Hopefully we'll have everybody here. If not, well, that just sucks. Uh, until then, like I said before, uh, if you're bored and want to listen to some other stuff of us, we got plenty of other D and D shows. We've got our guys, guys podcast. We've got angels art channels on YouTube and Instagram over at Tenshi art. I teach people um, how to cock. That's a pretty instructive class. It does. <laughs> it, it, it's very, it's very detailed. It, it's kind of surprising. <laughs> Very detailed. It's really, really detailed. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody will like. Anyway, it. we will see you guys next week. And so, so take care, y'all. Fairly well. <laughs> <laughs>